Um, good morning. Um, the unit we'll be doing today is academic and research skills for health and social care. And uh, the learning outcome today will be to be able to reflect on your own academic progress. So we looked at, just to summarise what we did in the last couple of sessions. We firstly looked at uh, the first one, which was learning outcome four, which was to be able to draft um, a piece of uh, research. We looked at uh, the different types of research that you could do, data analysis. We also looked at um, data sampling. Um, we looked at identifying uh, the different pieces of research, and we also looked at the structure of the research, so how it would be structured. So you identify a topic, some of the websites you could use, uh, look at the aims and objectives, identify the sampling techniques, the research. We looked at surveys and interviews. We also looked at um, how you draft uh, the uh, piece of uh, research and how it would be divided into different sections, which would be the introduction firstly, then the literature review, and then we'd look at uh, the uh, choice of research methodology, data collection and analysis, and summary and conclusion. And then the reference, which would be using the Harvard referencing system. Then learning outcome five, we looked at how to produce uh, academic work, we looked at um, using a professional report and um, looked at research and recommendations and the importance of that. Uh, focusing on skills development. Uh, so we looked at the Bloom's taxonomy and uh, Morag uh, McKinley's skills path. Um, in regards to Bloom's taxonomy, we looked at creating, uh, evaluating, analyzing, applying, understanding and remembering. We also focused on uh, skills development uh, in regards to McKinsey's, McKinsey's um, skills path, um, which was the skills path and the skills path in action. So we looked at the skills path, which we looked at elements of creating, evaluating, analyzing, applying and understanding and remembering. And then we looked at the skills path in action, which was things like comparing, modifying, planning, assessing, judging, uh, group, contrast, comparing. Um, and then we looked at dem uh, demonstrating, um, explaining, discussing, um, and finding. So these are the some of the concepts that we looked at. We also focused on skills development in regards to uh, examples to support and demonstrate the skills development. We identified uh, the issue of recommendations and looked at what why research is so important in regards to that, um, in regards to um, uh, research in Bloom's taxonomy again, and McKinley's um, uh, pathwork of skills. Now, uh, the, the last learning outcome is learning outcome six, which will be looking at being able to reflect on your ac own academic progress. So here we looked at um, reflecting on your own academic progress, uh, including development, academic skills, and academic English language, and the importance of this. So you reflect on um, your own academic progress, and we're gonna be using the next slide, which is Kolb's slide, which we'll go through. So what have you learned? It's so important you identify what you've learned, what the areas are for improvement, and uh, what are the areas of improvement. Don't forget to give get feedback from your supervisor. Also, the word count for this is approximately 250 to 300. Here we look at Kolb's learning cycle, self-reflection framework, and we look at the different types of um, elements of Kolb's uh, self-reflection in regards to that. So um, firstly, we'll identify what the Kolb's learning cycle, cycle was there to do uh, and how it was introduced. So it was introduced uh, by someone called, it was published by someone called David Kolb and his learning styles models in 1984, from which he developed these learning styles inventory. Um, Kolb's experiential learning uh, theory works on two levels. So a four-stage four cycle of learning and four separate learning styles, as we mentioned, they're concrete, reflective, abstract and active. 
Much of Kolb's theory is concerned with the learner's internal cognitive processes. Kolb states that learning involves the acquisition of abstract concepts that can be applied flexibly in a range of situations. In Kolb's theory, uh, the impetus for the development of the new concepts is provided by new experiences. So what he identified is learning is the process whereby, whereby knowledge is created through the transformation of experience. So when we look at the cycle, Kolb cycle, there were four things what we identified earlier, which I'm going to go through in details in regards to each one. So the first one is um, concrete, which is doing, having an experience. So the learner encounters a concrete experience. This might be a new experience or situation or reinterpretation of existing experience in the light of new concepts. And then we've got reflective observation of the new experiences. So the learner here reflects on the new experience in the light of their existing knowledge of particular importance are in consistencies between experience and understanding. Then we've got the third one, which is abstract conceptualization. And this is reflection gives rise to a new idea or a modification of an existing abstract. Uh, concept. The person has learned from their own experiences. And then we've got the last one, which is active experimentation. And this is a newly created or modified concepts, um, which look at um, uh, the learner applies their ideas to the world around them. So to see what happens. So it's really important in regards to that. Effective learning is seen when a person progresses through a cycle of four stages. So they have to go through them four stages, concrete, reflective uh, observation, um, abstract and uh, active experimentation. So there are various factors that influence a person's preferred style. For example, social environment, educational experience or the basic cognitive structure of the individual. Whatever influences the choice of style, the learner style preference itself is actually the product of two pairs of variables or two separate choices that we make, which Kolb presented as lines of access, each with conflicting modes at either end. So when we look at the learning styles descriptions, um, knowing a person's uh, learning style uh, enables learning to be oriented according to the preferred method. That said, everyone responds to and needs the stimulus of all types of learning styles to one extent or another. It's, it's a matter of using emphasis that fits best with given situation and the person's learning style preferences. So we've got th three learning styles, which uh, four learning styles in which concrete, reflective, abstract and active. And then we look at the first one, which is feeling, uh, sorry, diverging, which is um, the concrete experience and the reflective observation. These people are able to look at things from different perspectives. They are sensitive. They prefer to watch rather than do tending to gather information and use imagination to solve problems. They are best at viewing concrete situations in seven different viewpoints. Kolb called this style diverging because these people perform better in situations that requires ideas, generation, for example, brainstorming. People with a diverging learning style have broad cultural interests and like to gather information. The next one is assimilating, which is watching and thinking, which is uh, abstract conceptualization and uh, reflective observation. The assimilating <clears throat> learning preference involves a concise, logical approach. Ideas and concepts are more important than people. Uh, these people require good, clear explanations rather than a practical opportunity. They excel at understanding wide range of information and organizing it in a clear, logical format. People with assimilating learning styles are less focused on people and more interested in ideas and abstract concepts. People with this style are more attracted to logically uh, sound theory, 
theories then approaches based on practical values. This learning style is important for effectiveness in information and science careers in informal learning situations. People with these style prefer uh, readings, lectures, exploring analytical models and have time to think things through. The next one is converging, which is doing and thinking, which would be um, the active, uh, sorry, abstract concept, conceptualization and active ex experimentation. So people with converging learning style can solve problems and will use their learning to find solutions to practical issues. They prefer technical tasks and are less concerned with people with interpersonal aspects. People with a converging learning style are best at finding practical uses for ideas and theories. They can solve problems and make decisions by finding solutions to questions and problems. People with a converging learning style are more attracted to technical tasks and problems than social or interpersonal issues. A converging style uh, enables specialist and technology abilities. People with a converging style like to experiment with new ideas to simulate and to work with practical applications. And the final one is accommodating and that's doing and feeling. And that would be um, the concrete experience and um, active experimentation. And the accommodating learning style is hands-on and relies on intuition rather than logic. These people use other people's analysis and prefer to take a practical experiential approach. They're attracted to new challenges and experiences and to carry out plans. They commonly act on their gut instinct rather than logical analysis. People with an accommodating learning style will tend to rely on others for information, then carry out their own analysis. This learning style is prevalent within the general population. So when we look at, at Kolb's learning style, both Kolb's learning stages and the cycle would be used by teachers to critically evaluate uh, the learning provision typically available to students and to develop more appropriate learning styles. Educators should ensure that activities are designed and carried out in ways that offer each learner the chance to engage in the manner that suits them best. Also, individuals can be helped to learn more effectively by the identification of their lesser preferred learning styles and the strengthening of uh, these through the application and experiential learning style. Ideally, activities and materials should be developed in the ways to draw on abilities from each stage um, of the experiential learning style and take students through the whole process in sequence. So that was just a little bit about Kolb's learning styles. Uh, uh, the different self-reflection framework and identifying uh, the issues around the learning styles. So the next one is to develop action plan for further improvement. So this is an example of an action plan. So firstly, you'd look at what do I want to learn and why. So you'd identify what you want to learn and why in this um, template um, and what I would do to achieve this and what resources of support will I need? What will my success criteria be? So how have I implemented my learning and what impact has this had at work, outside of work, target dates for review and completion? So just to identify an action plan is a checklist of tasks needed to complete a project or achieve specific results. Action plans are different from standard to-do lists because they also include the resources required to achieve your desired goal. An action plan is a definitive checklist of tasks and resources needed to complete a project or achieve a goal. You can think of it as a visual countdown to the project delivery or a list of tasks needed to uh, achieve the desired results. Now you may be thinking, what is the purpose of an action plan against a to-do list? The most significant difference uh, between action plans and to-do lists is that action plans focus on achieving a specific goal. In contrast, to-do lists are ongoing and include tasks for different goals and projects. 
Working with an action plan ensures you complete every task and requirement to meet the expected standards of a project. As you develop an action plan, you identify any critical paths and dependencies. Uh, so keep in mind that a de developed action plan is not set in stone. It should be a dynamic document that you can adjust as your environment changes. So, you know, it, it, it can be changed. It's not something that will be done, you know, uh, too concrete, you know, set in stone. You, you can change it. Okay. And then we look at the purpose of an action plan. Action plans help order project tasks in a sen sequential and timely manner to achieve a goal. Uh, project managers, individuals can use action plans to achieve their work and personal project goals. So it, it, for businesses, it's very good to use and it identifies any sort of actions that need to be taken and the, the issue around it. Action plans prepare you for predictable and preventable challenges and focus focus your resources to achieve your main goals. So it also uh, looks at, you know, what kind of goals, what kind of resources you need, because you need the resources in place to identify and put together an action plan. And the and action plans are um, effective, um, you know, because they maximize personal and team productivity and resource allocation. Um, and in a business, an action plan in project management is a quick and easy way to manage different projects. You can quickly map out the resources and requirements you need to sketch a timeline uh, to complete tasks. Action plans should not be confused with project plans, which are more detailed and thorough project plans cover details like risk, uh, mitigation, quality assurance, stakeholder communication, and change management plans. In contrast, um, action plans simply uh, list the tasks, resources, as we mentioned in that template, and uh, what is needed, the time, the target, and the review of completion. Um, the main point of an action plan is to ensure you don't overlook um, critical tasks and milestones of your project. In its simplest form, developing an action plan entails listing tasks you need to complete and prioritizing them. So, you know, there are steps that you need to uh, take to identify and plan um, an action plan and put it together. Firstly, you need to define your goal, what you want to do to achieve it, as we've mentioned. Then you need to obviously look at the aspects of uh, what you need to achieve. So what is the whole point of you doing this, uh, this um, research and why they need for you to do it? And then you need to identify what resources you need. You may need, you know, um, extra books. You may need um, uh, research. You may, uh, you know, uh, you may need uh, things like, you know, um, extra rooms. Um, things like that, you know, you, you'd have to, you know, identify what you need in regards to, um, you know, providing, doing an action plan, because, you know, you have to uh, be able to identify that you need a checklist and you need uh, uh, um, resources because, you know, putting together an action plan or meeting a research um, aim and objective, you need, uh, you actually need to have resources in place. Um, and it's also when you look at an action plan, it, it's there to meet your deadlines and um, you need to identify any sort of, you know, um, if you need extra support, uh, you know, uh, like workers or anything, you need to identify that. Um, you know, you, need, you may need to also identify your SMART goals, uh, create a list of uh, actions, set a timeline, designate your resources and monitor the progress. So this uh, template will help you identify these things. And then we've got the um, review of the PDP from uh, Learning Outcome 1, which we looked at, and we identified, you know, um, what a, a personal development plan uh, was um, and 
I'll just I'll just uh, uh, refresh your minds in regards to what the PDP is. Um, a personal development plan, which is known as PDP, is an action plan that you can use to identify your individual goals and what you achieve, your strengths and weaknesses, um, the areas you need to improve and develop to meet your goals, and what you need to do to achieve these goals. And, you know, how you write a personal development plan is you set yourself goals, you prioritise these goals, you set yourself deadlines for when to achieve them, recognize your threats and opportunities so strengths weakness SWOT analysis you develop your skills or increase your knowledge and you use support network and to measure your um development also this template here it looks at your um personal my personal um development targets and then it looks at short or long term so whether they are short or long term um plans um, and then how will I achieve my targets? So what activities do I need to undertake to achieve my objectives? What support do I need? The date of the review and progress made towards target, further action required, an actual date of achieving it. Um, so an example would be that if you look at things like my personal target is to make better use of your time management skills and manage yourself better and you know these are some examples that you could look at maybe uh you know an example could be that um you set yourself uh, a goal you know like maybe time management but also things like you know maybe uh the fact that you know you'll be able to um to look at time management how you struggle with your time management and what you could do to you know, identify that you could, um, is it a short-term or long-term goal? And what, what kind of resources you will need for that? And also, you know, to identify if you, you know, um, another target might be, you know, uh, to receive a skateboarding sponsorship, you know, your personal target. And then you identify it through, you know, how you'd go about achieving this. So would it be a long-term or a short-term target? How would you achieve this? So when you look at uh, the example I gave on time management, you would look at how would you achieve, achieve to improve your time management? You know, what you would put in place, what kind of resources you would need in regards to that, you know, because it's it's one that you, and, and then you'd look at what the date of the review is, you know, when would you be able to identify any sort of issues of time management if you're looking at you know uh what your goals are so it might be things like you know you may have a goal to complete a phd you know uh completing a master's and then you would look at your you know which your is it short term it'll be a long term goal um and what would you where would you how would you achieve this uh inquire about it look at universities find a use, suitable university um and, you know, look at, at whether you would be able to get funding for it. And then you'd, any sort of progress you've made, maybe look into it. Um, and then how you can improve and things. So you need to identify what you want to do in regards to your PDP, because your PDP is there to, if there's any sort of further um, actions or any requirements, you will be there to identify them. So we've now finished learning outcome four, five, and six um, this week, okay? And what we'll be doing now is um, we will be uh, working on, um, so please have a look through all the learning outcomes we've done up till now. And then next week, we'll be working on doing the assignment and research skills uh, unit assignment discussion session, where we'll, you will identify what you will need to do in your assignments um, uh, for this uh, unit, um, and also look at any sort of extensive additional activities that you need to do in regards to completing it. But please make sure that you refer to Moodle for templates and any sort of resort, uh, extra resort, the resources that are available, additional reading, because that will help you support you when completing the assignment um, and drafting a piece of research. And also if it comes to, you know, uh, one of the tasks would be to produce an academic piece of work, then you would need to uh, refer to Moodle for additional 
resources, additional reading, and also any sort of additional templates that are on Moodle. So we've finished learning outcome four and five and six this week, and next week we'll be the discussion session. Thank you for attending the session today, and I will see you next week.